In January 2005, in the vast expanse of Australia, a tragic incident unfolded. This land witnessed a heartbreaking story centered on a young woman named Jasmine Kaur. What makes this tale truly shocking is the turn of events that would forever alter the course of her life. As we delve deeper into Jasmine's story, we will uncover the chilling details of her relationship with Tarek Jat Singh, a man who started as a fellow student but would later become the source of her torment. Hi and welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, please consider subscribing as it helps us motivate to create more intriguing content for you. Let's have a look at the case of Jasmine Kaur. Now, let's talk about Adelaide, which is the capital city of Australia. It's not as crowded as you might think, with a population of about 1.3 million. Adelaide is a peaceful and relatively young city. It hasn't had many problems caused by people behaving badly. There was a sad event in 2000 when Waiala Airlines Flight 904 crashed into the Spencer Gulf. Unfortunately, all eight people on board lost their lives because both engines of the plane failed. However, this was an accident, not something done on purpose. Australia can be scary because of natural disasters. In January 2005, there was a big bushfire in Wangari that took nine lives. It also destroyed a massive area of land, about 200,000 acres, and cost the Australian government over $100 million. Adelaide used to be called Tantania and was home to the Kayuna people. By the mid-1800s, it had grown into a big city. Now, Adelaide has a strong economy with a focus on making things, technology, the military, and healthcare. Australia is not just big. It's also known for having a good education system. There are several famous universities to choose from in the country. Now, here's an interesting fact. We found a student named Jasmine Kaur among the students in these universities. As a child, Jasmine lived in the Indian village of Narangar, which is located in the Sangra area. Jasmine had a natural tendency to assist people, even at a young age, and she always tried her best to support her family. Growing up next to her brother, Sukman, and sister, Gurbani Preet, she was a nice child. Jasmine's father tragically died when she was still a teenager, and this experience solidified her ambition to become a nurse. With her education and experience, she hoped to be able to take care of her mother as she became older. She persuaded her mother to let her go to Adelaide, South Australia, so she could pursue her big dream of studying nursing. Jasmine had been itching to travel and explore life outside of India for a while, and I must admit that she chose a very wonderful location. Aside from its natural beauty and way of life, Australia is well known for its educational system. Now, although her mother was initially hesitant, she ultimately gave in to Jasmine's wishes. She would have to live with her aunt and uncle, who were already residents of Adelaide, albeit there would be one requirement. With her application to the university already accepted, Jasmine gladly accepted the offer and was thrilled to start her life in Australia. After saying that, she packed her things, bid farewell, and hopped on a plane bound for Australia. In Adelaide, where festivals, sports, and food abound, Jasmine discovered a fresh start and an exciting new world. Between classes, there were also plenty of indulgences. Furthermore, she secured employment at Southern Cross Care, an aged care facility in the city where she was well-liked, dependable, and industrious by both patients and co-workers. She first connected with Tarek Jat Singh, a young man she met while attending university, when they both saw immediate similarities between them. In addition to having Indian ancestry, they had both studied in Australia, and by all accounts, they fell in love quite rapidly. Tarek Jot's parents, Mohan and Jazfire, welcomed him into the world. Growing up, he lived in Balala village, close to Samrala in India, his mother taking care of the family as a homemaker and his father working as a factory worker and farmer. He had a talent for doing well in class and consistently aced exams in the class 10 CBSE exam a nationwide exam taken by all secondary school students. He received a score of 95. He demonstrated a clear aptitude and talent by scoring 96 in the Class 12 exam. Tarek Jot applied for a position at the University of South Adelaide since he wanted to study computer sciences. After completing his foundational coursework, he left for Australia. He started his degree program in 2016 
and worked as a respite caretaker in between classes. Jasmine would enroll in the same university later that year. When their relationship first started, everything seemed to be going great, but gradually, little fissures started to show in the purity of their love. Although it was unclear at first how or why things broke down, both of their parents eventually stepped in. Furthermore, although Tarek Jot's parents were certain that the two were a wonderful match and would have a lovely marriage, Jasmine's family had different ideas. Now, since both sets of parents have somewhat different accounts of what happened, it really depends on whose side of the narrative you choose to believe. Tarek Jot's parents claim that Jasmine attempted to persuade her family to approve of the marriage, but her aunt, uncle, and mother were adamantly against. Her family allegedly rejected the connection and instead put pressure on her to break up with Tarek Jot because of their substantial financial background. He consequently fell into sadness. They further asserted that Jasmine spiraled out of control and even attempted suicide after her family attempted to marry her off to someone else. Naturally, though, their hero son stepped in to save the day. However, Jasmine held a completely distinct viewpoint. She would bemoan the fact that Tarek Jot would become overly domineering even if the relationship had a wonderful beginning at this period. He would try to restrict her social circle, her places she could go without him, and even the people she could communicate. Jasmine's mother claimed that Tarek Jot was constantly proposing marriage to her daughter because he was enamored with her. And by the beginning of 2020, one, Jasmine had had enough of his possessiveness and had made the decision to end things. But that would just make matters worse rather than provide a solution to her issue. Even though the pair had formally split up on January 4th, 2021, it was clear that her ex-boyfriend would not accept this choice. Tarek Jot started to follow and harass Jasmine. He would stalk her from her house, keep a close eye on her internet activities, and even start sending her offensive texts and messages. There were just so many of them. He was making threats against her and her family and he would often threaten to hurt himself if she did not come back to him. She naturally reported all of this extremely alarming behavior to the authorities. Additionally, Tarek Jot would start harassing Jasmine's family, but instead of caving in, Jasmine gave the police this information and additional statements. She made it clear to the cops that even though their nine-month romance was finished, he was still following her around her place of employment. She went on to say, he was over-possessive. He wanted to control who I spent my time with. She also mentioned how he would become upset if she went any place or made plans to see people without him. And he would frequently phone her repeatedly until she came home if she came home if she carried out any of these schemes. In response to these allegations, Adelaide police officially warned Tarek Jot for following Jasmine in February 2021. Sadly, the Kawar family was wrong to think that an official warning from the authorities would stop his obsessive conduct. After Tarek Jot was warned a month ago, things had calmed down. But Jasmine's employers at the Southern Cross Care Home were taken aback when they learned she had not come up for work. Jasmine's co-workers were confused and alarmed by her sudden tardiness, as she had a spotless record at work and was never known to be absent. They responded by calling to check on her aunt and uncle's well-being. Unfortunately, her family did not know where she was either, so the phone call did not help defuse their anxiety, and the moment this unexpected information surfaced, a mad hunt for the young lady went on. Her aunt called the police to report her missing after trying everything without success. It seemed improbable that Jasmine would just decide to leave. He was happy with the life she had created in Adelaide, one that was getting better now that Tarek Jot was no longer in it. Furthermore, she was eager to meet her family and was even planning her first trip back to India in over three years. Investigators searched for leads but found none, so they turned to her ex-boyfriend, who was immediately considered a person of interest because of his prior formal caution. Tarek Jot was ready to answer any questions, but he said he was alone at home the night she disappeared and that he had no knowledge of her abduction. Having said that, his alibi quickly began to unravel, and by dawn, he had revised his account, now Tarek Jot declared that he had seen Jasmine after all, but he could not believe she had killed herself. He decided to bury her body instead of calling the police. Tarek Jot 
made the decision to hide her body in the Flinders Ranges, some 400 kilometers north of Adelaide. Located north of Adelaide, the Flinders Ranges are a deep-cut mountain range in South Australia. It is home to Wilpina, Pound and Bunkers Conservation Reserve, two well-liked tourist spots. Her devastated family and the relatives of her killer heard the terrifying details in court. Singh acted in a clinical, cold, and deliberate manner. CTV foot showed him buying a shovel, duct tape, and cable ties from Bunnings. He even attempted to fabricate an alibi by switching cars with his roommate and changing the SIM card in his phone, claiming to have destroyed part of the evidence when returning to Adelaide from a rust break. At first, he denied having anything to do with the murder, saying he only intervened to prevent Jasmine from killing herself. According to his attorney, his client was having trouble adjusting to the end of their relationship. The judge handed down an obligatory life sentence. Next month, he will establish a non-parole period. He was imprisoned as investigators constructed a timeline of the events in the wake of this graphic timeline revelation. Tarek jot out for Bunnings to pick up his deadly shopping list of items as soon as the relationship ended in early March. He changed the SIM card in his phone and borrowed his roommate's automobile that same evening. He kidnapped Jasmine from her job at the Southern Cross Care home in North Plimpton just before 10 at night. Even now, Tarek Jot will not say exactly what transpired between them. After that, Jasmine, however, was bound, with her feet tied together and her hands tied behind her back. He obviously borrowed a car, blindfolded, gagged, and kidnapped her. After that, Tarek Jot traveled more than 250 kilometers and over five hours north into the Flinders Ranges. Without a doubt, Tarek Jot would have had plenty of time to think over his impending activities throughout this period, and Jasmine would have been extremely anxious. Even with these terrifying realities, he took no action to thwart his plan. After placing Jasmine in a shallow grave, he claimed to have caused superficial cuts on her neck, but not enough to kill her. However, an autopsy later showed that she had swallowed dirt into her lungs, therefore showing that she had not died when he had buried her. Even worse, when he started to shovel dirt on top of her, he probably knew she was still breathing. To top off his savagery, he drove off his savagery, he drove off, threw her belongings in a garbage close by, and headed back to Adelaide. It is understandable that Tarek Johns caused national indignation with the disclosure of the case's specifics, particularly among Jasmine's relatives and friends. Now, just weeks before his trial was about to begin, he would subsequently amend his plea from not guilty to guilty. His defense team attempted to wriggle out of a mandatory life term in prison by painting the case as a crime of passion. The defense went on to say that because of his mental collapse, once the relationship ended, his judgment was seriously compromised at the time, declaring that premeditation played a role in the days preceding the crime. The prosecution refuted these allegations. The prosecution goes on to say that Jasmine was forced to suffer and that the murder was ineffective. They added emphasis by stating that the ingesting and active inhaling of soil were the causes of her death. It is difficult for me to imagine the whole horror she must have experienced while still cognizant and aware of what was happening to her. According to the prosecution, the murder was carried out as an act of retaliation or vengeance and had an exceptionally high degree of cruelty. In addition, the prosecution stated that Tarek Jot demonstrated a clear lack of regret and responsibility by refusing to provide further details about the crime, even after he had already admitted guilt. Despite the indisputable nature of the evidence, Tarek Jot has refused to provide details about her death, the setup of the crime scene, or her placement inside it. The judge, on his way to sentence the defendant, stated that he was unable to find words to adequately describe how Miss Cower must have felt when she was placed in the grave and buried alive. He mentioned being unable to describe the terror she must have experienced when realizing she was being buried alive. The judge also emphasized that the way the defendant chose to kill Miss Cower was extremely callous. The judge further observed that there was a brutal degree of premeditation evident in every facet of the murder, including its planning, execution, and cleanup. This led to Tarek Jot Singh's July 5, 2021, sentencing to life in prison with a minimum of 23 years under the law. 
Tariq Jot will be in his 40s when he is eligible for parole, and if he is ever allowed to leave prison, he will probably be sent back to India. It is no secret that love is a complicated sensation, particularly after an abrupt dance, and that when love has nowhere to go, it can occasionally transform into hate and fury. However, Tariq Jot gave the worst conceivable response. He came to the conclusion that no one could have Jasmine if he couldn't. It is really horrifying how much he stalked her. Jasmine reported his actions as often as she could, and the police also did an excellent job of forewarning him. There is also too much premeditation on the part of Tariq Jot. He got supplies, leased a car, took out a SIM card, and used the several hours he had to reflect on his actions on the trip. The fact that the man had so many chances to change his mind shows how calculative his actions were, and it is shocking to see how callous his apathy was towards someone he claimed to love. After abducting her, he abandoned her to die in a pit after throwing her into a car. This exhibits an extreme degree of callousness and total indifference towards human existence, and the more you consider it, the worse it seems. There are no extenuating circumstances, justifications, or grounds for hope of salvation. The agony that Jasmine endured at the hands of her ex-boyfriend is beyond horrific. In addition, her daughter's passing has created a huge vacuum for the friends and family that remained. Jasmine's mother expressed her sorrow, stating that she was heartbroken and referred to her daughter as a precious little girl. She regretted the day she agreed to send her daughter to Australia and mentioned missing her every single day. She also mentioned that there was no one to rescue her daughter and she had spent her last hour on earth with the worst of humanity. When Jasmine Cower passed away, she was just 21 years old, and like any other young person, she had aspirations for a self-sufficient and bright future. She worked hard at a job she enjoyed, studied to get qualified in another helping profession, and made great efforts to get a decent education. Her family claimed she was a selfless lovebird who would provide a hand to anyone in need. In order to properly care for her mother, should she ever need it, she even chose to pursue a nursing degree. Jasmine regrettably lost all of these opportunities, and a man who developed a deadly infatuation with her stole her entire future. Although friends and family are understandably upset over what Jasmine took from them, they also remember the positive impact she had on both their lives and the lives of others despite Jasmine's desperate attempts to terminate things. Her family traveled a great distance to the Flinders Ranges, the place where Jasmine was killed. Even though the location will only bring back terrible memories, they paid their respects and left flowers there, and it was a significant step in their protracted healing process. Maybe their goal was to bring love and compassion to a place where brutality was the only thing seen. Maybe they wanted to provide happiness through their memories of her, where her future was brutally ripped away, and through the suffering of a life so brutally lost at such a young age. We hope to honor the positive things Jasmine gave to her family through this video, just as she and her family did.